Hi sweeties, how are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sing. If this is your first time of coming across this channel, sweetheart, kindly smile that subscribe button and turn your notification so you are notified each time I upload and please give this video a thumb up. I appreciate you all so much and I am saying a very big shout out to every one of you for all the support and love you are showing me here with. I am grateful and you all are super sweet to all my members. Shout out to you all. So today we'll be talking something very important. This video is in part, right? And trust me, you are gonna be, you're not gonna be disappointed. So they are kind of scared because eventually they are gonna be the minority and the rest of it. And this white man is actually asking that black, white, uh, black people are looking for segregation, like they want their own thing, they wanna be in their own space and all of that. And that black people are becoming black supremacists. And I'm asking, of course, I mean, why would they not want their own space? Because all of you all look for a way to every damn time to earn a lie, pew pew black people at any time you want. Yes, they actually want their own space. And you were saying black people they don't want to do anything with white people. Black people, I, black people aren't even bothering you. And it's just quite amazing how they wake up. I mean, to think that black people are their problems. We are not your problem. Go find your problem and sort it out yes black people are actually looking for their own space safe space because like the space is i mean the space is not even safe for them i mean they wake up to people bothering them at every point in time and then you all think it's okay it is not cool so if you are saying that yes they actually want their safe space and they are not bothering you people the only thing they want is just for you all to dismantle that system you all mounted that is oppressing them nothing more than that they are not asking you for anything or something. Have you ever seen in any black history where they say that black history is violent? No, it is not. If they look look around and you will find out who the violent people are. They keep saying black people are savage. No, if you look around, you'll find the, who the real savage is or the real savages are. Of course, they want their own spaces because they want to be free. They want to feel free. They want to be okay. I am just going to roll this clip. We'll come back to talk about it. I absolutely want to read all your comments. Let me know what you all think in the comment section. So straight up, let me roll the clip. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Amadai Shakur. So this gentleman here was kind enough to do a video calling people of my skin tone racist and saying that we have nothing to be complained about in 2023. So I have a response to that. So let's get into it. Those live videos of some uh, very racist uh, black people, you could call them black supremacists, they, uh, they don't want anything to do with white people. They want to be completely separated from white people. They want to build their own cities. They don't want anything to do with white people or anyone not black, actually. And uh, this is something that I found many years ago on Twitter. They called it Black Twitter. They probably call it Black TikTok, too. It's always interesting when someone like him comes out and says something about people of my skin tone wanting to separate and not be around them when they had Jim Crow, okay? They had segregation. Our ancestors had to fight against it so that they could be accepted into places and spaces with them. Okay, they didn't want to live around us and some of them still don't, but he's not talking about that. He wants to talk about us as if there's something wrong with some of our people not wanting to live around them. But here's the thing, uh, some of them don't want to live around people who look like him because they're tired of being discriminated against. They're tired of dealing with racism. Okay, they're tired of oppression. Okay, please pay attention. He also said that people of my skin tone have absolutely nothing to be complaining about in 2023. Well, who is he, first of all, to tell us what we should or shouldn't be complaining about? He doesn't know how it is to be us, to walk in our shoes, to live in the skin that we're in. Neither do we know how it is to be him. So he can't speak for us. He sounds ridiculous. And also, uh, he's upset because some of us complain. Well, in the Bible, it says, surely oppression maketh a wise man mad and a gift destroyeth the heart. Okay, please pay attention. And since he brought up racism, well, let's talk about it because at the end of the day, what's the definition of it? Well, it says the belief that different races possess distinct characteristics, abilities, or qualities, especially so as to distinguish them as inferior or superior to one another. Okay, so I'm sorry. We are not able to be racist because we don't think that we're superior to anyone. You see, our ancestors and us still today are fighting for equality. So how could the people who are fighting for equality be the same people who feel superior to anyone else. I'm sorry, that makes no sense. 
And furthermore, when he's saying that we have nothing to complain about in 2023, well, here's a sign from Jim Crow. It says we want white tenants in our white community. But this is a story from 2023, okay? The same thing, okay? A woman of my skin tone suing her landlord after he tried to evict her and allegedly said he'd rather put a white family in this unit. I'm sorry. We've nothing to complain about. Please sit down somewhere, sir. You don't know what you're talking about. It's really sad. He also said that my people complain about being deleted by the police while unarmed, but that more of his people, in fact, are deleted by the police unarmed. Well, that's not true. You see, more of his people are absolutely deleted by the police, but it's not while they're unarmed. They're usually carrying a weapon and they engage the police in a violent manner. They're trying to fight them, trying to harm them, and things of that nature. At the end of the day, also, they're 76% of the population, whilst we're 13 so they say I actually believe we're more but nonetheless they're the majority there's much more of them so yes more of them would lose their lives to the police but like I said it's usually warranted because they have weapons and they're usually doing something they're not just innocently at a traffic stop complaining and then they get deleted okay that's not what happens this is absolutely nefarious uh, this isn't good for the country it's not good for Americans we you know Martin Luther King and Malcolm X did a lot to bring equality to black people in this country. Uh, I'm sorry for what happened many years ago. I'm actually not sorry because I didn't do it. But, I, you know, I'm sorry on behalf of America that we had that history. But uh, get over it. Now, in the one breath, he says he's sorry for America's history. And then he tells us in the next breath to get over it. Well, he would never tell these people in the picture to get over it, and nor should they. They should always remember the atrocities that were perpetuated upon their people, and as should we. Because, you see, if you don't learn from your history and if you forget your history, you may likely be doomed to repeat it. Please, Spantage. He also brought up Dr. King and Malcolm X saying that they fought for equality for our people. Well, our people have never gotten that equality, okay? We still don't have equality till this day. That's why racism still exists, okay? Also, we don't have hate groups. We don't have hate groups that have gone around for centuries subjugating people, oppressing people, lynching them, uh, ethnic intimidation being used as a tactic or any of those things. We've never burned down their towns. We've never destroyed their homes. We've never done many of the things. We didn't cause race riots and any of those things. And so it's very interesting that he's complaining about us and anything that we say or do. He can't make that make sense. We've never mocked them, okay? At the end of the day, you can see in this photo, clearly, okay? They're mocking us. So he needs to probably go and follow my friends, Walt Kelly and uh, Dixon White, okay? And as well as Jolly Good Ginger and Tizzy ENT. Okay, maybe he could learn something. You can't tell me that black people can't be racist. Racism and prejudice are often used interchangeably, especially by whites. Especially by whites. And to me, it's a signal that we don't really understand the discussion or the conversation about race. Because racism is the belief that one's race is superior to another's, coupled with the ability to oppress or discriminate based upon that belief. For example, a black person may be prejudiced against me as a white person, but that prejudice may be based upon past experiences, but often that prejudice would not have a component of superiority. They may not trust me, but they don't believe that they are superior than me because they are black and I am white. So in America, given our history and our makeup right now, it makes sense only to talk about whites being racist. Blacks can be prejudiced, whites can be prejudiced, but as far as racism goes, it's whites in America that harbor the racist sentiment. Well, I couldn't have said it better myself. Absolutely no lies detected. If he doesn't listen to me, maybe he'll listen to him, okay? Uh, TikTok, this is for entertainment purposes only. I was taught that the chiefs of the tribes in Africa sold their people into slavery. If it had not been that way, there would not have been any slaves anywhere in America, Robert E. Lee or anybody else to have owned. So don't blame Robert E. Lee. Maybe you should be after your ancestors. ...slowly destroys a nation by removing all icons, such as Aunt Jemima, space from pancake mix, Civil War statues, this, um, other things like uh, historical school names. It says in the Bible, Jesus himself never condemned slavery. In fact, 
he said, slaves have an obligation to, oblige, uh, to um, obey their master. I heard a lot of racist things as I stood because I think some of you good people thought I was one of you, but I'm not. So I'm here to say that all of this does make a difference. You are speaking from your white culture and your white self. that the chiefs of the tribes in Africa sold their people into slavery. Okay, so if you haven't seen this video, please go back and watch it in its entirety because it's always interesting when I hear people using that same talking point that Susan is using, okay? She says that the chiefs of the tribes in Africa sold their people into slavery. Well, here's the thing. The African kings did, some of them sell their people into slavery, but here's the reason. Uh, the people came there with guns and they didn't have guns and they did so under the threat of death. Now, that's the part they conveniently always seem to leave out. They didn't just willingly do it for money or anything like that. It was under the threat of death. They decapitated some of those African kings' heads and posted them publicly for everyone to see as an intimidation tactic, okay? And also, they lied about what they were going to do to the people when they brought them here, okay? They basically acted like they were going to treat them so nice and all of that. They didn't know anything about chattel slavery. And so, and then there's another man in that same video who talks about how in the Bible, even Jesus agreed with slavery and said that you should obey your masters. Well, here's the thing. That's all just a load of BS. Now, anyone with an ounce of sense knows that the Bible has been transliterated numerous of times and that there are many things that are, you know, translated in the wrong way. There's things that are added in there just to paint narratives for certain people's benefit and for the, uh, the oppression of others. Okay. At the end of the day, here's what I want him to make sense of. If he's saying that Jesus thought slavery was fine, well, what about when God spoke to Moses at the burning bush? Okay. Let's talk about that. When God spoke to Moses at the burning bush and said to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And if he did not, then he would send the plagues upon them. And when Pharaoh refused, what did God do? Well, God sent the plagues upon them according to the story. So I'm sorry. Why isn't he quoting that part of it? At the end of the day, people want to use all of these, you know, uh, talk talking points to try to push their narrative and agenda and to make it seem as though it's perfectly fine, the low down dirty things that are done to people of my skin tone. But at the end of the day, they're not telling the whole truth and they never do because you see the whole truth doesn't fit the narrative. Okay. And this is what's going on in Florida and you have governor Ron DeSantis, uh, uh, I'm sorry, DeSantis uh, to thank for that. Okay. Please pay attention. The last thing we need is someone like him and with his mindset and ideology and bigoted ways and views and racist thoughts and ideology. The last thing we need is someone like him in the White House. Okay, please make it all make sense. I was taught that the chiefs of the tribes in Africa sold. Once again, here we go. Do you think that black people literally wanted to come here and be and to do or to act as slaves. They probably had their own way of life. They probably were doing things they wanted to do. I don't understand if people were sold into slavery and they were in Africa, why did they have to come to this land to be treated so poorly and to continue the poorness of your character tells you something about this world and the world we live in, in the United States that we live in. Why not educate, educate people about themselves? You know, I never knew a lot about my family history. I had to go dig up some things. I had to go, you know, scratch my way through ancestry to find the people that I you know who I was like I didn't know why I had these different issues or I ha I was upset or all these things because no one ever taught us think about being away from your your own land and then put into another land and then being treated as if that's what you deserve now the reverse psychology is that now white people your white European people are afraid of black people when we used to be terrified of the European individuals i call it just absolute betrayal in the sense that you don't want people to know the truth about where they come from we know about every other nationality we we can read it we can see it it is evident but to understand the core the deep core where you come from is inevitable you have to go deep for it. it's a needle in the haystack and you have to burn the haystack to get down to the needle i say this it is nothing wrong with educating people how is that going to change the fact that we still want to live breathe act and be ourselves tell me what that is never condemn slavery in fact he said 
Slaves have an And this is why you should not be a Christian young black man. Because Jesus never condemned slavery. And he said, you shall obey your earthly masters. Have a good day. My family fought to save their farm under this flag. Who was working that farm? My, My family was. was. Who was working the farm? They were poor. Do you know how much a slave cost back then? There's actually a knowable answer to that question. Um, by 1860, at the time of the Civil War, enslaved people's value was somewhere between $200 on the low end all the way up to $2,000. So we're talking about, in today's dollars, maybe somewhere between $2,400 and, you know, like $50,000. There are even some estimates that say that some enslaved people were valued at somewhere around $180,000 in today's dollars. So you can think of it basically like owning a car. And about 1.6% of Southern families owned more than 200 slaves, like having like a whole car dealership. But about 20 to 25% of Southerners at the time of the Civil War owned at least one enslaved person. It's like basically living in a society where wealthy people all have cars. Well, what do all the people who don't have cars want? A car. And even if a family worked on a small farm and didn't have enslaved people, what do you think their goal was? Their goal was to earn enough money to be able to buy people, to buy humans to do the work. It's not like families didn't aspire to have enslaved people. Why do you think that Southern whites were willing to go to war, to literally go to war against the United States for slavery? Because remember, every single state that seceded, all 11 of them said explicitly, we're doing this to preserve slavery. Well, why would somebody who's on a small farm want to fight to preserve slavery? because their aspiration was to become a major planter, which means a major slave owner. That's what they all wanted to do. That's what they all aspired to do. And they also wanted to defend the system whereby they couldn't be enslaved. Only Africans could, only black people. And so that system of hierarchy that allowed any white person, no matter how rich or poor, to be superior to any black person, and for that black person to be captured and treated as property and their children and their children's children owned by a white person, this is a system that benefited every single white person in the South. And by the way, every white person in the North too. Because even if you weren't a slave owner, you benefited from the economy that cotton production, that rice production, that all of these industries generated. You could benefit by being an insurance owner. Slaves were insured like cars. And slave people also produced goods that were sold. So if you were somebody who was in the shipping business or, you know, the, the, the cotton milling business, all of them benefited from slavery. So whether you were a small farmer or a big farmer, the slavery system benefited you. And you were willing to go to war to preserve it and to preserve white supremacy because that was the whole basis of your society. And by the way, a lot of people in the South went to war simply because they were told to and because the rich people around them made sure that the poor kids were doing the fighting, right? And so it doesn't matter whether your family was rich, poor, had one slave or 10 or none, it doesn't matter. Everyone in the South benefited from that economy and that system and they went to war to preserve it and to preserve white supremacy forever. So that's the answer to your question. You also told on yourself just by saying that at all because like, why are you curious about how much they cost? You missed that system, right? You think things were better then? One last note. That flag is not even the flag that your forefathers fought under for their farm. That was not the flag of the Confederacy. That's a flag that they created afterwards. It's literally just a symbol of racism and white supremacy. And you're flying it because MAGA. Peace out. She really schooled them. Then let's get into the first one. Like that man was just so rude. Anyways, they always come up rude. The one that started saying black supremacists and the rest of it. Like, did he hear himself out? Like, I kept saying it. Black people cannot be right to assist to you people. But then it really shows how ill-mannered some people are and all that. Black people are not even looking for it. I'm not even asking you people for anything. Black people do not even want anything from you. If you ask, do black people really want Yes, actually, they really do want their own community because, like, you know, you all been doing them dirty all this while and like doing so many horrible things to them like just back okay 
today that I learned that there was a, a shooting in a Jackson, a Jacksonville in Florida. And so all these horrible things and all that, and he was like saying about segregation, but like back then where there no segregation and all that, black people aren't even wanting much from you. They just want you people to dismantle that system you all mounted that is like oppressing them. And then he went further to say that, sorry, I mean, it was years ago, but I am not sorry because he was not the one that did it. But you all are still benefiting from all the things that the slaves and all that did. I mean, all the things that they did back then, they worked their asses off. You all are still benefiting out of it. But you all come here all the time to want to gaslight black people by telling them it's been or oh, it's been long ago. Get over it. And then you come and say that sorry, you are not sorry. We do actually black people really do not need you to be sorry. Because you were not the one that did it. Did anybody say you were the one that did it? But it was still your ancestors because you are an extension of your ancestors and all that. When people say get over it and the rest of it, like it's been, it has not been long ago. It was just a few years back. And still to this very moment, a lot are still happening. The segregation, is this still over? Of course not. It is not over. Is this still not happening? Of course it's not happening. It's still happening. The police brutality and the rest of it is this still not happening it's happening right black people can't do anything while being black they can't just go out while being black they can go fishing while being black they are not bothering anybody but yet you obviously find a way to unalive them and pew pew them and then somebody got their nerves to come out here and tell me something and the ones that were talking about slavery that even Jesus did not condemn slavery. Quit Jesus. Or the one that you all always look for a way to. Like back then during the slavery. You all have a Bible. You get the slaves. Where it tells them that this one is this. And the other one is this. And you do not allow them to read the main Bible. Why? Because you all wrote the Bible. The, the one they gave the slaves. Were the one they made. For them to make them feel that. They are not being subjected to something horrible. That it is they, they are, I mean, they, that they are suffering for their sins and the rest of it. That's why one of the pastors, a white pastor, actually came out to say that during the slavery, that uh, slaves did not protest. They did not get to the capital to protest. Why? Because they seek the face of God and they ask God for forgiveness. Forgiveness of what? That for forgiveness of their sins, which sin did they committed that landed them that landed them there? What sin did they committed that landed all of them there? So it is just really horrible how they just want to turn the Bible uh, to fit, I mean to feed their own narrative and all that. And for the last woman that said, "You want me to support you." No, I ain't going to support you because you understood. It is just horrible how they always still look for a way to support the evils they did. This is where I'm going to draw the curtain. See you all in my next video. Bye for now.